Hey guys and welcome to another episode of South African Craft Beer Tasting. Alright, today we've got something a little different. Um, usually, obviously, I go ahead and I buy a, a craft beer, a South African craft beer, and I bring it up here and give it a taste and rate it and let you guys know what's up. But uh, tomorrow is IPA day, um, so I thought I'd do a special video for IPA day. Something a little bit different to, uh, to commemorate uh, everybody in the, the beer industry's favorite uh, uh, beer style, pretty much. Um, and uh, so what I did is a month ago, or roughly a month ago, I brewed myself um, a New England IPA. Uh, I fell in love with that style when I tasted the Devil's Peak Juicy Lucy. And uh, since then, it's just been something I've, I can't stop thinking about. So I decided to brew Singer's Heart and IPA in a different style of IPA. I thought I'd brew that up for myself. And uh, yeah, and so that's what we've got today. We've got actually my own uh, home brew. Uh, it's called the Big Juicy. Uh, that's what I've called it, B-I-G Juicy. It's named after the Notorious B-I-G. And if, I'm not sure if you guys know, but he has a, a song called Juicy as well. And uh, so I thought I'd... Uh, make a play on words there so that's what it's called that's it right there um, just in a plain old brown 440 mil and uh, yeah I've had a couple of them and to be honest at first I, w I wouldn't say I, I was disappointed but I tried it about a week and a half ago and it was and I wasn't entirely impressed and but I had a f it was at, at a stage where it could have still been green and it was in fact green because about a week later I tried it just a few days ago now I tried it again and I was very impressed. Um, it's the aromas seem to pop through. Uh, before I was getting this sort of overly alcohol type, almost phenol type smell coming off the top, and that's not there at all anymore. So I don't know how a week earlier it could be so different, but really it was. So that's a new experience for me um, in terms of green beers and how much of a difference uh, that can make. Um, but I tried it a few days ago and I was happy. So let's go ahead and get into it. Nice carbonation. Um, it's been in the bottle. It was three weeks, three weeks on Monday. So that is, yeah, it's about three weeks. There's not much difference there. Um, yeah, let's give it a pour. All right, that's it there. Um, as you can see, I got, uh, I achieved the haze I was trying to go for. I'm not sure whether you can see it clearly. You can see it's got a nice little white head, um, kind of big bubbles. They don't hang, the head doesn't hang around forever. But in terms of looks as well, part of the New England style is that it's hazy. And as you can see, I definitely got that. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into the smell. Okay guys, um, I love I love the smell on this. Um, I'm very straightforward about uh, the ingredients I use. I, I know a lot of guys are quite secretive. I don't mind if you guys ever even want the recipe. It doesn't bug me at all. Um, so I'll be honest and say, I used Simcoe and Mosaic as the bulk of the hops, um, especially in the aroma and flavor side of things and the whirlpool and the dry hop and stuff. And then in, in the beginning at 60 minute of the boil, I actually threw in uh, about 12 grams so not a very little amount of of south african bittering hops uh i forget the exact one which i use it was this very high alpha acid south african bittering hop and i know you're not always supposed to put bitters uh bittering hops in this style but i just felt that a little bit of bitter just to give it that back end bitterness would just really please my taste buds and again i'm the home brewer so i'm allowed to really choose how i want it and i think it worked out pretty cool so the bulk of the flavors are coming from Mosaic and, and Simcoe though. You don't get any of that the bittering up edition. But yeah, I love the aroma. What I get mainly from there is, um, I mean, I'm getting dollops of guava, passion fruit, papaya, um, you know, tropical fruits, uh, uh, a little bit of mint. Uh, I get quite a quite a bit of marshmallow I know that's a weird descriptor but definitely I get quite a lot of marshmallow yeah all right guys so let's get into the style okay the New England um, style IPAs you want um, you want that hazy look you uh, want 
really um, aromas coming out strong and forward. You also want um, very low bitterness, um, especially initial bitterness that you do in the boil. You'd want that initial bitterness to be like extremely low or non-existent. Um, how did I do it? Well, the way I felt is, you know, best case scenario for me was just using a base malt, um, a base pale ale malt. Um, uh, I used a little bit of biscuit. Um, I also used a little bit of wheat and I used a whole bunch of oats, quite a lot of oats, which I usually don't do in brews. Um, that increases the mouthfeel a bit. I also did treat my water a little bit. I made, you know, just a bit, a little bit higher mineral balance. Uh, I can't remember the exact balance, but it's a typical New England style balance that people are going for. I just sort of guesstimated and got as close as I could possibly get. I did a whole lot of whirlpool hops, uh, a whole lot of uh, two stages of dry hopping, one during peak fermentation and one later. Um, and yeah, let's get into the taste and see, you know, let's let's get in there and see, Have you know, do I think I've succeeded in terms of creating a New England style IPA? and uh, whether it's something I would brew again and you know that sort of thing. Let's, let's get in there. Alrighty. So I like it. I like it. I definitely needed that extra time to mellow after the first time I tasted it. Um, I really like it now. I think it's, it's, it's doing a good job. The one thing that stands out for me as a bit of a mistake on the spear um, and it's something I read up on while I was researching the style, which was that quite a bunch of brewers use simple sugars, excuse me, simple sugars inside their beer. They'll be using table sugar, they'll use uh, dextrose, uh, corn syrup, corn sugar, you know, all that kind of stuff. And the reason why they do that is because they want it to dry out a little bit, um, you know, and also probably also just to ramp up the, the alcohol a bit. So I, you know, and I don't know, after all the recipes I read, a lot of guys were doing it, so I thought, okay, I'm going to definitely do it. And I ordered some dextrose from, from my brew shop, and I, I chucked that in. Um, I can't remember the exact amount I used, but whatever amount it is has definitely thrown my recipe a little bit off, in my opinion. Um, I think if I used a lower uh, amount, I don't think it would have really bugged me that much, but I used a fair amount, and I went a little wild with it, so... What's actually happened is it dried out quite a lot, more than I would say the style needs. And also, you know, when something's so dry, it tends to give you a little bit of a, a punch. Uh, sort of like an alcohol type punch in a way. A little too dry and things like that. And that's not 100% part of the style. But yeah, other than that simple sugar problem, I think, yeah, it's a good beer. There's also, I use the biscuit, like I said, and the biscuit... I won't use the biscuit again either, you know, to be honest, the next time I brew this, I'm probably going to use a little bit of melanoidin, if that's how you pronounce it. So I might try that, um, I might ramp up, I'm actually definitely going to ramp up the dry hops and the whirlpool hop additions. I did put a shitload in there, don't get me wrong, but I'm going to go further with it, even if it costs a little bit of extra money. So yeah, I think I think I did a decent job for my first one. and. Uh, I'll definitely be brewing more because I'm hooked on the style right now. And to me, I'm glad it's winter now because to me, uh, come summer, I want to have these uh, in the bottle the whole way around through summer. So I'm going to try to brew like two batches at a time and I'll even get experimental with it and I'll update you guys about the experiments I have. And yeah, guys, if you want the recipe, uh, go ahead and, and, and comment and let me know. 